He was very articulate, extremely handsome, very charismatic, and just a handsome man. And he began to lecture. And so he became the prophet of space in this country. The next thing we know, he's on the front cover of Look Magazine, of Time Magazine, of Life Magazine. And in 1952, when I met him, uh, he, he was giving a lecture at the American Museum of Natural History, Hayden Planetarium in New York. And I was introduced to him by my professor of astronomy at Harvard. Nice, my professor introduced me to the great Bob Brown. But Professor Whipple, was one of the few professional astronomers that uh, took the space program, or the dream space program, hadn't happened yet, seriously. Very few astronomers, most astronomers at that time were looking at galaxies and stars and not the planets. And, and space travel was just a bit odd for a lot of them. But Fred Whipple was definite, and he'd written articles with Von Brown, and they wrote a series of articles in Collier's Magazine. It turned out to be from 52 to 54. They wrote um, uh, eight issues with Voted to Space, Space Frontier, uh, Onto the Moon, Travel to Mars. And these had enormous uh, 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 impact because the, the, the big format magazines in the old days, that's what everybody wanted Life, Look, Collier's, Saturday Evening Post. And uh, that came to Disney's attention. Dizzy said, oh my God, well, this, we got to do something. So they brought Von Brown in as a consultant, and uh, they did three Disney films. So the timing was beautiful. 1952 to 54, the Americans were getting a big dose of what space might be like. And uh, three books came out right afterwards, published by Viking Press, Force <laughs> the Space Frontier, and uh, Destination Moon, and uh, onto Mars, Exploration of Mars. And they came out uh, uh, up to, 50, I think, 53, 54, 56, yeah, 56. And uh, Disney gets in the act and wants to do three films as part of its Tomorrowland series. So Von Brown was in it, a man named Willie Lay and others were in it. So some space, uh, uh, some German space medical experts were in it too. Convenient. And then Sputnik, which is the best news for American space program. Sputnik 1 goes up in October of 1957, the same year that the last of the Disney series had come out. So now, you know, Mike Von Brown is a huge hero. And he, he, you've got Disney on television, incipient television. You know, everybody started having television sets. And then a, uh, about three months later, we put up our own satellite, Explorer 1 and the space race was on. But, but we, we in Huntsville, I, I started working on it in, in the, the mid-50s, uh, always had a, a, a fondness for the Sputnik because the Sputnik was the spark that led to the space race, which led to us having a, our first artificial satellite. And that, the story of that satellite is in the book. You know? uh, it's, it's quite a complicated story how it happened. You had the political problems. General Eisenhower, you know, was very uh, uh, reluctant. Not, he, not against the Germans, but using ballistic, military ballistic, nuclear tip type missiles to put up a peaceful American satellite. And uh, then the story of the Vanguard came in. The Navy had the Navy Research Lab had an all civilian rocket that kept blowing up on the pad. So finally, uh, then the Russians are doing more and more things and putting up a dog in space and, and so on. So they allowed us to. Uh, put up a satellite with a, with a, a converted Redstone rocket with the three upper stages. And we, and we call it the Juno One. Tell me where people can get more information about you and the uh, book you've written. Where they can get information about me? Yep, and, and your book. Well, I mean, I'm, I guess my latest biography is in, just published, Who's Who in America and Who's Who in the World. I've got a long, right up to date biography there. And a lot of stuff is on course. You can Google me, but quite a bit of stuff. Uh, the book, I mean, the book's history, I'll give you a little bit of that. It came out, we made a contract with, with, with Roland Gant, who was my friend and the fighter, fighter pilot and the senior editor. And then he wanted to make certain we have a, a, a almost simultaneously American edition. So I had an editor in New York, Hugh Rawson, working for, uh, for um, uh, Thomas Kroll, and he was delighted. So we, the, the premiere of the book came out in 76. Uh, in Britain and then a couple months later the United States and we were lucky because we got the coverage of the first edition of America, got the entire front page of the New York Times book review section. So we had the full first page and we had 
four long columns inside. So that was a great kickoff uh, for the Rocket team. And the book stayed in print, did very well. We sold about 40,000 copies, and which a book like that is not bad. And then MIT Press came out, I think, in 83, uh, with a soft cover edition, which sold well. And then we had an aircraft designs edition out on the West Coast, and then Apogee came in. Uh, when was your Apogee book, the, the first date of the hardcover? Two, uh, 2000? 2002? Two, something else. Well, uh, anyway, in the early 2000s. And then that sold out, and then your car edition came out. That one's about uh, 18 months ago. So eight, about 18 months ago. Yeah. And that's still in print. Awesome. Short history of the book. <laughs> and it's still around. And it has a nice disc. It does. The disc is amazing. Yeah. Amazing disc of, uh, of Von Brown speeches and launchings of Vita, lots of stuff back there. So you get a book and a disc. 